Hey, how's it going? We are in Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. So let's check this out. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master put in charge of his servants to give them their food allotment, uh, their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant who the master finds doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and he then begins to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers." That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does, do, or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. All right. So... What do we got going on here? First of all, Jesus is talking about being ready for his second coming. So Jesus came, he lived on the earth, he died on the cross, he rose again, but he's coming back. He will return. There will be the second coming of Christ. And that's what this is referring to, being ready when the master returns. And so we're still waiting. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we won't know the hour when that's going to happen. <laughs> like they, you're just talking to people 2,000 years ago, and it hasn't happened yet. So, uh, of course, it wasn't going to happen in their lifetimes, and that's been how it's gone every generation. We'll see when Jesus comes back. You know, it could be soon. We'll see. But the point Jesus is making here is be ready. If it's the second or third watch of the night and you're ready, it doesn't matter. If it's, <clears throat> you know, 6 o'clock in the evening and you're ready, great. If it's noon and you're ready... There you go. It's all good. He's just saying, be ready. Be uh, serving the Lord. Be walking in His ways the whole time. Don't be beating up the, the help and that sort of a thing. Be ready, serving the Lord until His return. You don't have to figure out when it's going to happen. Just serve the Lord. Be doing right in the interim period. Peter asks a fantastic question. Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? It's a good question. Who... Do we need to be ready? Does everybody need to be ready? What are we talking about here? And then the answer is more complicated than the question. Basically, what Jesus is trying to establish here is kind of a sliding scale. It's sort of interesting. You know, the, the culmination from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So what he's saying to Peter is, yeah, you know, I'm saying this more strongly to you than I am to some other people. I'm saying it to them too, but, you know, you've been entrusted with much, so much is going to be expected of you. So it's a really interesting way for Jesus to answer the question, you know, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? So the more awareness the more ability, the more resources, the more responsibility each one of us has. So the answer Jesus gives is not very black and white. It's basically, look, different people are going to have different expectations put on them based on their understanding, their resources, and their abilities. So there you go. If you have the ability to do something and you're unwilling to do it, you'll be judged based on that. 
If you're unable to do something that somebody else is able to do, you're not going to be judged on that. It's not like the world standards where, you know, uh, somebody has this ability, so they're held in high esteem. Another person who does not have that ability is held in low esteem. Let's say you're a professional athlete or whatever, you know, like, ooh, the best one, you know, you're the MVP of the league, that sort of a thing. Well, they may have natural ability that allows them to get to that place, whereas other people do not have that ability. And so they get the accolades in the kingdom of God. doesn't matter. You, you do what you're able to do, and you'll be judged on that. And then verses 47 and 48, I do not have a place for this in my theology. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, that servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. What are we talking about here? Is this end, like, is this when Jesus returns? There's going to be different levels of finite punishment, not hell, but finite punishment, many or few blows, and then come on in. It's kind of a purgatory concept. Is that where they get the purgatory thing? I'm not really sure what to make with this. Uh, if this is, you know, talking about judgments in our lives, you know, in, in this life, I'm not sure. But the bottom line with it is, I don't want to find out. I don't want to have a bunch of abilities and resources and opportunities and not make use of them. So I want to make use of the opportunities. I want to make the most of every opportunity so I don't have to find out what the few blows and the many blows and all that stuff is. So let's pray to serve God faithfully while we wait for the Lord's return. So Heavenly Father, help us to be faithful to you. Lord, we know that uh, you know this life... Uh, has its ups and downs, uh, but Lord, we also have different gifts, different abilities, different opportunities, different understandings. And so Lord, help each one of us to make the most of what, what you've given us, both, you know, like financial resources and uh, spiritual strength, Lord, all that sort of stuff. Help us to do the right things that we know we can do and not put those things off. But Lord, help us to walk in your ways and to serve you faithfully until you return. In Jesus' name, amen.